Hello everyone, I'm Eric from Etiquette back for another live stream for teachers. If you're a teacher, if you're an English learner, if you've got any questions about teaching, uh, welcome to the live stream uh, where we're going to discuss it. And today we've got a very good live stream. We've got a special guest joining us, Kitty. And uh, I'll introduce her in a couple of minutes. First, I, wanted, uh, I want everyone to join so uh, we can... Uh, all settle in and then I'll introduce her and we'll start today's uh, really special live stream. Uh, but first, let's see who was first. It was Vivian. Hi, Vivian. Good to see you. We've got Amin from East Africa, Djibouti, uh, and then Intasar. Good to be good to see you again. Mr. Sultan, welcome back from Cambodia. And James, wow, another. Uh, um, teacher in South Korea here with me. Great to have you. And this is me saying uh, hello. And my dad's here. He says, hi, everyone. Greetings from Southern Point of Africa. Who else is following the Tour de France? My dad loves the Tour de France. He always uh, puts it on. And then he, he used to have this exercise bike that he would uh, ride along while watching. By the way, guys, if you've got any questions, put them in the comments below. In a couple of minutes, when I introduce Kitty, uh, you can ask her some questions and, uh, yeah, we'll take it from there, especially make it uh, very easy for her. Wink. Make it very difficult. We need to <laughs> give her difficult questions. And then we've got William. William, good to see you back. And he also says hi to my dad. Uh, guys, um, so, yeah, if you've got a question, tell me, um, say hi, uh, say where you're from, and we'll get started. Uh, oh, James, you also like the Tour de France? Uh, yeah, me, I never really got into it, but uh, whenever, you know, if I'm with my parents, you know, I, I would watch it with them. Uh, Huzaifa, hi, Muhammad, good to have you from LinkedIn. Aldo from Peru, Tamba, very nice. Uh, Meraba, hi from Turkey. Diamond, thanks, my idol. Uh, idol, well, that's a strong words, but uh, I'll take it. Thank you, Diamond. Uh, Nur, uh, from Morocco, of course. Vivian, from Kurdistan. Uh, hello, hi, Letty. It's been a while. How have you been? Hello, everyone. My brother and his wife has gone to Tour de France from Liverpool. Wow, seems like a uh, uh, like many of us have uh, similar um, interests and hobbies. That's so good. Hello from Jordan. Uh, uh, Sinead, Heidi. Good to have you back from UAE. Nordebek from Uzbekistan. Uh, Muhammad from Somalia. Hi, Marta from Greece. Hot? Yeah, it's really hot. Uh, this past uh, weekend, I actually, I treated myself. I went to the beach. Uh, I got a bit burnt, but it's worth it. I love going to the beach and swimming, so I, I had a good time. Actually, during the week, I did some, I made some special videos. Um, a lot of you have been asking me uh, for uh, videos of me actually teaching activities and uh, teaching younger learners. So uh, a friend helped me and I went to a language, um, a language school with uh, younger learners and a, a language academy. And I taught some lessons where I played activities with the students. It was very difficult because I had to teach uh, and I had to record at the same time and check the, the audio and everything. But I think uh, I'll have some interesting videos for you in a couple of weeks. Okay, let's see. Uh, is everyone here? I'll give it another minute. Guys, if I don't get to your um, your comments, I'll try and go through it. Uh, but I'm going to be talking with Kitty. If you've got any questions, I'll try and scan through and find the best ones. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, we read them. And I'm so thankful that you are joining us. So I'm just quickly going through here. Um, Mohammed, uh, okay, this is a nice one. I'm going to answer that question, Mohammed. Uh, Mimi's ESL word, a world. Hi from Algeria, from UAE, uh, Argentina. Nice, Kayla. Sofa, uh, Safa, hi. Uh, uh, can you help me? Uh, I think there are a lot of platforms that you can look for that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, thank you so much, Hala. I'm happy. Medium. Uh, 35 degrees. It's, it feels like it's hot everywhere, except in the su um, southern hemisphere where my parents are. They say it's quite cold. Uh, withering, lovely to have you. Nude um, and Angelina. A venerable. Hi from Thailand. I'm actually going to Thailand next week. I'm so excited. 
Okay, everyone, without further ado, I'm going to introduce our special guest today, Kitty. Hi, Kitty. Hi, Eric. Thank you for having me here. How and are you today? Hi. Oh, yeah, I'm doing really great right now. I am having fun with my family, and also I have done my lessons a couple of minutes ago. <laughs> wow. You, you know what? Uh, I, I, I've been um, looking at what you do, and um, you know, for those of you who don't know, uh, Kitty is very busy. She's an online teacher, and um, she she's on many platforms, and she's so hardworking. You know, and that's the first thing I, I noticed about what you do, and that's why, you know, I, I go uh, whenever I see other teachers out there sharing information. I try to find them, and I'm so happy to have found you. But uh, for those of uh, for some of our viewers who don't know you yet, can you introduce yourself? Oh, yes, of course. Thank you for this opportunity, Eric, for introducing myself. Hi, dear teachers. Good evening or good day. And also the students. Nice meeting you all. It's just like a dream to be here with Teacher Eric Show. And let me introduce myself. <laughs> well, I'm living right now in an archipelago of the Philippines. And I've been a corporate English trainer for more than 10 years, and not to brag. Well, I've been teaching to Japanese students, Korean students, and to different companies such as Kohlberg Pharmaceutical Company in Germany, and IT OMB Solutions, also Pasanabu Corporations from Tokyo. It's like a human resources where I teach English to managers, directors, and uh, to speak English with clarity and not to mumbling and improving their credibility to, you know, uh, to get trusted to their client companies, especially. And also overcoming their fear in speaking English, just like this. So I am just taking this opportunity to speak with Eric. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. So. Kitty, it sounds like, uh, yeah, you've got a lot of experience, but my first question is, how did you become a teacher? How did you fall into, you know, into this job or this career? How did you get started? How did I get started? Uh, eventually, I'm, I'm just a, a person who is working in a city hall. Yes, I've been working in the city hall as a secretary. And uh, I have seen a flyer so back in the day. Uh, I believe that it was like 2013. And I have seen the flyer. I just graduated from uh, the, my university. I, I, I'm not a real teacher. I don't have even a degree or any master degree. I just graduated as a Bachelor of Information and Communications Technology. Mm. Yeah, that's my background. And all of a sudden, I have seen a flyer that looks really great. 2013, before pandemic, of course. Uh, I said, oh, I really want to go here and teach English or whatever it is. I like interacting with people. So that's what I did. I went to the Japanese school offline and I teach their English online. I even don't know how to speak English that time. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly speaking, that's really true. And I just uh, speak with young learners where I just share what I know. And that happens. It goes like that well, well i think you've got a great personality like you said you enjoy talking to people and um yeah. you know you can you can go to university and you can study to become a teacher mm -hmm. um and then perhaps not be that great at it we've seen many teachers that go out and, and they study but you know uh, perhaps they struggle mm -hmm. a bit so uh, what do you think made you successful or how did you adapt to become a good teacher what uh, uh, what skills did you have that you think you could translate into becoming a better teacher if you, if, oh if, if you guys understand what i mean so so uh, why do you think you were successful in becoming a teacher becoming yes uh in only environment it's pretty you know competitive because you, you've got a tons of teachers out there that's pretty outstanding and uh i'm just like a beginner at that time which i don't know to, how to uh to do any only classes so how, how did it happen? I just don't know. But anyways, okay, it goes like this. Uh, perhaps because I'm a persistent person who is, I mean, determined to win every lesson that I, I have. I even have a build strategy in teaching, in teaching online. Build, uh, I mean, 
I use build as I build a commonality to my students where I have this kind of connections. And uh, what else? Yeah. You, you kind of find out what they need. And then yes. uh, for every class, you find out what they need. And then you mm -hmm. kind of create the lesson to suit, um, you know, their needs and what they want to learn or what skills they want. Yes, to practice. that's right. Wow. Because first but, impression is really important. Mm. Uh -huh. Well, I, I think what's interesting, and we've got a question here from, uh, let me see, where is it? I was just, Hala. She says, how can I teach online? Now, I think this is the difficult thing. Um, before we start mm -hmm. anything, you know, it's, uh, we don't know much about it. So sometimes we've got to try and learn to do everything on our own. Um, sometimes we are fortunate and we can find a mentor or someone to help us, you know, navigate these difficult things. So how about mm -hmm. you? Did you just learn online? Did you Google? Did you have someone that, that helped you become an online teacher? Mm -hmm. Uh, for me, you know, for us new aspiring teachers, it's really vital to have a good communication with your first students because they were like your, uh, you know, they were like your first uh, student to teach. Yeah, you, you need to really have a good background, uh, get ready to your peripheral devices such as your earphone, your camera, it has to be really clear. And also your lightning, your lightning should be pretty comfortable, especially if you are teaching English or any kinds of subjects to kids. Yeah, so that they your, need to see your face and your expressions, yes, yes, you know, expression. can't have a dark room. It, it, it mm -hmm. should, yeah, especially if, it, if it's very dark, they can't see your face and they can't relate with you. I mean, learning a language mm -hmm. is such a personal thing. And uh, uh, that's one of the things that struck me, you know, when we started chatting is that you're very personable. And um, you know, you, you really care about other people and you um, uh, you take you, you try and communicate as best as you can. And that brings me to my next question. So you teach um, a lot of young learners, but you've also helped a lot of uh, business people, you know, mm -hmm. especially from from Japan, Korea. Uh, you know, uh, you've helped a lot of them uh, with their English. So uh, most of these adult learners, what type of skills do they generally want? What do they want to learn uh, in business English or um, just in their communication? What do they look for? Oh, okay. Yes, as you said before, Eric, that it's basically important to know the, the that suits their classes. Yeah, you have to know what do they need, what do they, do they usually need. I mean, to speak English with clarity. That's they want to speak English with confidence and to overcome their fear. Mm. Yeah, that is the things that, uh, you know, blacks their, their heads when they're speaking in English. They have to overcome the, these kind of obstacles that's on their heads. Yeah, uh, you, you know, um, I was, uh, I, I think confidence, it's something we, we all desperately want, you know, competence and confidence, you know, we yes, want to... That's right. We, we don't want to have fear in our lives. And for us to, to live without fear is almost impossible. And so if we want to overcome it, we need to increase our competence in that. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. why we expose our students to, to, um, you know, to try and speak about different mm -hmm. topics and subjects. And we also try and get them to, uh, yeah, we improve their fluency and their communication. Um, and so, um, what type of topics do you usually make your lessons about? Because you've probably made hundreds and thousands of lessons. But are there some common themes or topics that often come up when you teach uh, business English? Oh, yes, that's right. Specifically into, uh, you know, useful emails. Yes, because they were likely like support engineers and they need a kind of... Uh, you know, useful phrases that they might need or what else uh, it depends of the person it, usually those kind of business people they they really want to do a conversation or small talks as well mm. yes i i think what's important and this is something that really struck me um in in korea and uh, and in asia in general is uh the way that you appear to your public image you know, in, in the West, uh, we kind of believe, you know, it's, it's good to look good and to 
you know, to have a good, a, a good image, a public image. But we believe that who you are as a person is more important. But what I found is very important in Asian countries, uh, especially in Korea and Japan, is um, how you appear in public. And that is reflected by your appearance, your communication, your emails, your presentations. Like uh, we have James saying here, most of my business English students want to first learn uh, conversation, then email presentations, reports, and things like that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so, so yeah. So exactly like you said, emails are important and getting them like that. Uh, what okay. have you been doing recently? So I'm curious, what have you been doing recently these past couple of weeks? Uh, this couple of weeks, I've been preparing for the lessons again. <laughs> And uh, what do you usually do? I have a group lessons for my young learners. Yeah. And uh, I usually have uh, conversations with my students, my regular students. They are studying with me for more than five years. They just want to, you know, to have a small talks and um, improving also their, how do you call that? It's, I mean, we are doing a kind of activities that we are trying to spoiling movies. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and post it on Instagram. It's just like a game that every time we are taking a lessons, we are improvising ourselves to speak about movies. And mm. we're spoiling our movies, we are rewriting it, we will draw some kinds of pictures or images without copying. <laughs> we have. Um, I think that's the beauty of like of like movies, you know, it's a common story. So, you know, even though, you know, you might not have the same upbringing, maybe, you know, you don't have the same background, but uh, uh, most people watch movies, you know, and we can use it to connect and also could to connect to language, which is really nice. Uh, uh, yeah, so that's fun. So you've had students for more than five years. Um let me ask, uh, have you seen, like most English teachers, well, for myself, you know, you see students for a semester or for a year. Maybe if you're teaching at a school and you're teaching certain grades, you see them perhaps for a couple of years. But teaching some students for five years, you know, what improvements, what change, or, or that relationship between you and your, the student, uh, how have you seen them grow from where they were to... Um, where you have them now? Yeah, that's a really good question. I also have a students which I almost give up because they are not, <laughs> I feel like, okay, they're not listening or uh, I struggled a lot. I always figure, okay, I want to, yeah, give, give out with the students. Yeah, there were two uh, twin kids. And uh, uh, from that time, giving up with these two kids, I, uh, what did I do? I never give up to to teach them, and I I change the, some kinds of uh, strategy in order to teach them better English. And uh, yeah, yes. You and, persevere. I, I mean, after <laughs> sorry, the way I'm moving, I I definitely win it, and I. Yeah, I uh, eventually found out that they are learning English from me and uh, they speak English. They could, uh, you know, read English. They were just like only four years old. Sorry to, to say that. Uh, four years old. And the well, other. Listen, this is one of the, the funny things as a teacher is uh, you can have students and you think maybe you're not having an impact. You, you feel like the lesson hasn't gone well or you're not sure if they mm -hmm. like you. And then later, their parents would come to you or another teacher would come to you and say, listen, you've had an amazing effect uh, uh, on, on, on my, my kids, you know. Um, so often we as teachers, we don't realize uh, what impact we have on our students. We might think, oh, you know what, uh, perhaps I wasn't doing a good job, you know, or maybe I was too strict or uh, I wasn't hard enough, you know. Um, like, for example, uh, on Tuesday... Uh, I went and uh, I was teaching a student and he was, he was, a, you know, one of those naughty boys that uh, they were just naughty for attention, you know, and he was doing that. And, um, and I, I just, uh, I was chatting to him and helping him. And then he 
and I thought, well, maybe I didn't do a great job, you know, with discipline or things like that. And then he came back to, and then the next day, his mom gave me some tea and she said he, he couldn't stop talking about the classes. He had such a fun time and he's excited to study English again. So uh, I think we as teachers, we've got to know that, you know, uh, we've got this experience that we feel is a certain way. But our students see us in a whole different light. And uh, yeah, as long as we do our best and we try, like you said, you persevered, you, you tried new tactics and... Uh, and they did improve. You know, um, it's difficult to see what effect you have on your students uh, day after day. But, you know, give it a, a couple of weeks, give it a month, give it a year, and there will be noticeable results. Uh, by the way, guys, uh, we've got some uh, questions here. Hala asks, can someone send me what platform there is I can teach online? Hala, Google is your best. There are lots of platforms. Uh, Kitty, do you know any platforms where they can oh, teach? Oh, yes, from? that's right. Um, yeah. They can also teach freeplay.com. Yeah, freeplay.com. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a good way to teach. Yeah, with I mean, you're going to, uh, I mean, put in your rate in there. Yeah, italki. What I else? Yeah. Yeah, webview.com, a famous dictionary oh, yeah. in Japan. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, I, I think. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Hala, please check. Uh, I'm sure italki, there are many platforms. Just go on Google. Um, but I'm curious. Uh, oh, by the way, guys, if you've got any questions, especially difficult ones, put them in the co comments uh, uh, for Kitty to answer and to give me time to think about the answer. Um, by the way, so Kitty, um, you are on Facebook. You've got a page there. You are on YouTube. You are on Instagram. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sure there are other platforms. I don't know if if, if there was a platform on the moon, Kitty w would be on it. Um, but um, so I was curious, uh, why why do you put yourself out there? Is it to find more students for your online classes, um, or is there another reason why you're trying to put these video or content out? Oh, that's really a good question, Eric, because, um, you know, when I'm finding a company for my students, I, I, to tell the truth, I don't like going on a platform always. That's why I'm finding my students on my own. I make a letters. I give um, an email to different kinds of companies online across the globe, especially in their Europe. And they, I did a kind of the interviews with the project managers. And when I get the job, they give me an opportunity to to teach their, you know, their members. Mm. So it happens. That's why that, that would be also my profile. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but that's not for uh, any coming I mean, an intention to just just like you. You're I'm not that really a kind of YouTuber, but I give them as a kind of profile. So if they're gonna search me. And I have a good image as well as I'm, I do. Mm. Yeah, they're going to hire me and I get an opportunity to get interviews. That's one of my my goal, to get a chance to speak with them. I think the, the, um, the reality is if we want to teach online, you've got to put yourself out there. You know, um, in the past, uh, we were very hesitant to to put ourselves online for people to see what we sound like, what we look like, um, you know, uh, uh, how we teach. But I think uh, the reality is that video is going everywhere. And we as teachers, we're going to be seen by the parents and by the public. Uh, most professions are like that, but especially something like teaching that is, is such an important social role. So I, I was so impressed with most online teachers who started that trend, um, realizing that, you know, the more people know you, the more people, the more opportunities you can have. You know, it's, it's putting more lines into the water when you're fishing. Um, now, we've got a couple of uh, guys, by the way, James, thank you so much for, for all your information. He says there, uh, I do my, um, some Carrot Global uh, and we had some other ones, uh, Steve. Uh, says that in my experience, the vast majority of EFL students have become nebulous idea of what they need to be learned to be able to. Part of our job is to guide them. One hundred percent 
Steve, 100% um, right. Yeah, we've got to, as teachers, we are more like a guide. We understand what our students basically need. And now we just try and get them to go there. Uh, um, recommend whatever. Uh, there was something else I saw. Um, oh, and um, there was something else. Okay, James, I, I actually, I want to talk about this uh, very quickly. Now, this is a common practice. Um, uh, I'm just going off topic for a little bit, Kitty. Uh, we'll get back to online teaching and teaching in general. Um, now, in the past, many or still many um, school or many students, uh, many schools or many uh, language institutes or academies, they have this practice of if a student misbehaves, they have to leave the room for a certain amount of time. And uh, or, um, you know, even at school, sometimes if you have students that are very naughty and disruptive, they get sent to another classroom. In my experience, um, this is not a good practice unless the student was so bad and uncontrollable that it was just impossible. Now, I've I've seen horrible situations where the student just doesn't want to work and for whatever reason they don't want to learn and they want to be disruptive um i've had that happen um but i think that the, the best way to solve that is to to put your uh, rules into place because number one the student if if they leave they're not going to learn and perhaps that is also not going to teach them any lessons why they they, they they disrupt class and then they get to sit outside and just wait outside um, no, it, it, I think it, it sends a, a bad message to the student and for you as a teacher where you've got to learn different skills for effective classroom management where you apply the rules and you work with that student, you know. I think you're going to need to do a lot more one-on-ones with the student. Just talk to them, find out what's going on and try and um, read, well, not reason with them, but make them understand what the rules are in your class. Uh, Kitty, do you have any ideas? Do you have an opinion on this? Um, so if a, if a student um, misbehaves or is so disruptive and they have to leave the class, so do you, you know, do you have an experience or have a feeling um, about this? About distracting and they just uh, go. Uh, as of my experience, I haven't had any kinds of experience like that. All of a sudden, most of my students ask permission if they're going to leave earlier. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, they, they can, but, oh, okay. But, what is what of uh, like when you were at school? Th were there mm -hmm. some situations where a student? I bet you weren't a naughty student. You were one of the uh, good students. I'm most right? behave <laughs> in my class. Okay, uh, <laughs> I don't uh, speak. I'm sorry. Yeah. So you went from <laughs> super shy to very talkative <laughs> and sociable. Yeah. Uh, well, that's amazing. Maybe. But uh, I mean, at school, did you ever have that experience of like um, uh, uh, a teacher sending students out? We've had that a lot, you know, uh, growing up. And I've also seen it as a teacher. You know, I when I first started teaching, I did that as a teacher where I had students that were too crazy and I sent them to a senior teacher's class. And I don't think that was the right thing to do because they lose respect for me. And it also shows the class that I don't have control over them, you know, so it puts me in a weak position. But at mm. school, did you ever see that? And what is your opinion on it? Okay, yeah. Mm. With a teacher who is very authori authoritative, <laughs> mm. uh, I just, uh, I mean, the, it's going, I mean, I have, I don't have any experience of offline classrooms. So I don't, I don't think I will be the, you know, the best teacher whom you're going to be asking me like that. Yeah, so just based on my experience for my classmates, when they do that and if they were really disrupting, yeah, they're going to get a kind of uh, chalk and try to throw to the <laughs> students, you know, if they're mm. not listening or they're doing something. Uh, you know, well, what's funny is I think, um, you know, there will be more cameras in classes in the future too. Not only ah, okay. for, I, I think in the future, there will be more ca cameras in the classroom, not mm -hmm. only for, for um, so we will have to be more professional. So uh, as teachers, 
you know, uh, if students are busy playing or they're misbehaving, you've got the video there to the parents. The parents come to you and say, oh, my angel Billy didn't do anything wrong. And you're like, Psh. Uh, you know, here's the evidence. Look at this video. This is your son when you don't see him. Um, but also for the students that um, as teachers, we're going to have to be better at our jobs because we're always going to be visible. Now, I've had teachers, I think the majority of teachers, what do you guys think? Do you agree with it? Do you disagree with it? Personally, I'm okay with it, but that's just because I'm on camera all the time anyway. Um, but I, I do see there are some downsides to it. But in general, I think it can only have a, a good effect. Um, what do you guys think about cameras in the classroom? Uh, by the way, thank you so much, uh, Auntie Marga, for the 200 yen. I'm very happy for that. Uh, Juan, hi, Juan. I think it's Juan. Uh, Harun, uh, we'll get to that. Gabriella, good to see you. Uh, yes, they were kindergarten student, right? Yeah, it's difficult with young kids that, you know, they, they, they can't communicate well what they want. Uh, Trierick main purpose is for the sake of participation. Uh, now, Steve, we'll get to your question in a second. But first, I've got another question here that's very interesting by praise. Okay, now this is for you, Kitty. Um, what is the downside to teaching English to uh, Japanese students? What do they need to know? Oh, okay. For Japanese students, they really want to uh, improve their pronunciations and to reduce their accent. Because for them, they always have, you know, the, the problem of L and R sounds. That's why we would like to train them to speak with clarity and not to mumble. So they really want to improve their pronunciations. Yeah. And uh, what else? Well, is there a difficulty for you? Like um, if, if, if you teach students, uh, um, you know, if you teach students from one country to another country, are there certain things that are different or more difficult, more challenging? Like uh, you've got students from different countries. Uh, are there some interesting things that you noticed? Oh, yes, of course. It's very interesting that I have noticed while I'm teaching online because I'm, I have met even celebrities. Yeah, I have met amazing people teaching online like Vincent Vinil. He is one of the finalists into the voice show in France. So I get a chance to... Yeah, to meet him and uh, have uh, have fun in his, you know, in his singing songs. I taught to Mr. Lee Dong Good children. Yeah, where they are also very famous in South Korea. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's pretty interesting. <laughs> Yeah, so you 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 get to meet lots of people from different places. I think you know it's so amazing. Uh, so I, uh, I I took a mini vacation by going to the beach, and everyone was traveling. And it's you know we we feel so small and rather insignificant when you see how many people there are out there. You know how many amazing individuals there are. And one of the beauties uh, of uh, one of the beautiful things of being a teacher is that um you have you get to meet some of these students and you get to help them in their journeys you know you uh, just by teaching them you're part of their lives for the rest of their lives you know so uh, i think that is a very beautiful thing and i really enjoy it um now we've got a we've got a difficult question by steve uh eric and guest uh guest uh which would you consider a better strategy for effective language acquisition Learning with the aim of passing a test or passing a test with the aim to check your progress. Okay, so um, should you, uh, is, is it good to be learning just to pass, the, uh, pass a test? Or do you just take a test to check where your level is because you want to focus on progression? What do you think, Kitty? I'm going to give you the, um, you've got to answer it first so that I get some time to think about my answer. <laughs> Okay. Um, with that, I believe it will be better if I'm going to focus or the student should focus not just a test, but to enjoy the test, even though he or she is cramming during the test. Mm. Yeah, enjoying with the test is even better. So they may not, they may relax during the test. 
them. Mm -hmm. And with the kind of examinations, you know, the, the examinations that they're doing, which they are preparing, uh, they come a lot and even so stressful. Right, yeah. <laughs> Eric? <laughs> Well, well, it's interesting, you know, I, I, I haven't taught my, uh, because when I, uh, teaching in Korea, I basically cool. teach um, to help students uh, communicate better, right? So um, it's, it's not for specific, well, obviously they get grades and that's important, but it's, it's not like an OPIC test or TEFL test, uh, not a TEFL test, but one of these tests that they have to take. Um, I haven't done that in a while, you know, um, but... I think, like you just said, it's it's um, it's important for them to go through that process and to study for tests. Uh, to give an example, uh, uh, Steve, uh, I think you you know if we have that in internal motivation, we want to improve at something because you know we've got that drive, and then we can take a test to see okay how how have we progressed, you know, or where. Where do we have some weaknesses that we can work on? What mistakes have we made that we can fix? And and that's truly good, but not everybody will would ha will have that. You know, not everybody is really committed. Nobody's going to to write a test for fun. There are people like that out there, but the majority of us will. Oh, I've got to write a test that might be stressful. No, thank you. I'll just enjoy my life. Um, but I think it's very important to prepare for these difficult situations, these tests in life. So I think we do have to give students tests. Uh, a, a good example is now I've been training kickboxing for a couple of months. Next week, Saturday, I've got my very first amateur, amateur fight. And it's scary, you know, um, because I've been preparing for this test. And uh, it's 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 a it's going to now I'm fine because it's a week away from now. But let's say a night before, I'm going to be really nervous, you know. But I'm going to get into that ring and I'm going to write my test. And afterwards, I believe I will be a stronger person for it. Now our students are the same. Uh, they they are studying to improve their English, and uh, some of them might have that internal motivation to do tests and to improve. But the majority will just want to. Um, need to need those tests to push them to improve. Yeah, that, that's just what I thought. Uh, James, thank you so much for becoming a member. By the way, guys, so the membership, um, uh, the members, uh, you, you um, donate $2 a month and that goes to my coffee fund. Um, so thank you so much. Now, Kitty, sorry, I've been talking too much. Um, let me ask you, uh, what is something you want to want to talk about? Is there any topics or anything that that that's interesting to you that you want to talk about when it comes to teaching or learning English? Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, I mean, to just keep hydrated while you are teaching anything. Yeah, bring uh, pet bottles on you with water, and uh, don't forget to to help your students, give feedbacks to them. And remember that it's going to happen some of the, the unexpected things. And mm. uh, we have to uh, look back what brought us here in teaching online environment. What brought us here, and uh, I believe it's not because not because we would like to rooming around the classroom. I bet it's about the passion that brought us here. Uh, well, uh, that's nice. I like it. Looking back, feedback, uh, looking at some of the mistakes and preparing for the future. By the way, we have Abdul. He says hello to both of you. And wow, this is really nice. Viral and trending Pinoy video says, uh, it is said that the influence of a good teacher can never be erased. Teachers plant the seeds of knowledge that will grow forever. Thank you so much, Teacher Kitty, for teaching and motivating us. What a beautiful message. Um, yeah, well, that's interesting. Um, I think what I'm curious is, so you talked about the past and feedback and things you have to do. What about, what about the future? How does Keith, uh, teacher Kitty see the perfect future? What, what do you want to happen in the next couple of years? How do you see your career going? What do you see happening in your world? What would you like to see happen? Um, 
yeah, it's hard to predict right now because I'm enjoying the process that I'm in, which I teach in the corporate lessons. And um, it's really hard to predict because I'm into the contract. I cannot really, yeah, just, <laughs> yes, put that down. So my future, my future, I would like to make an online English platform, yeah, nice. which is I already tried before the skillcomper.com. And uh, we have tried is that it works, yes. But I get a little tired because, you know, doing a lot of kinds of marketing out there and we, I mean, it's very competitive all over the platforms. Though I would say that I could do that even would I mean we even would like to build another online platforms which we would like to work on after one of the goals that we would like to achieve. So hopefully, yes. And we would also like to invite more teachers to teach in there in that kind of platform that we were developing. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I, I think uh, so often we get stuck in the day to day activities that um, we forget to think about, you know what, uh, in the long term, in, in, in a year, five years from now, where do I want to see myself so that we work towards that? And I like that. I think, you know, going to a platform. And <laughs> I have to go to BM. Okay, by the <laughs> way, guys, I can read well. I think, uh, so BB, it says BB, but B, uh, BB told me that it's BM, so I'm saying BM. <laughs> <laughs> and B BM says, uh, don't evade my question, Eric. You should marry your good looking guest. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't know. Kitty is actually 19 years old, and I'm no, way too old for I'm her. Old, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, BM, thank you so much. And BM says that um, Eric is so shy. Hats off to you. Uh, me shy never. I've never been shy a moment in my life. Well, many times. <laughs> yeah, and James says next we will be teaching in holidays. Yeah, there's uh, James. Lots of things happening. I think they're bringing. You know, it, it it's it's not a joke. I think something like that's going to happen. You know, online teaching the next one. Uh, Prey says here. Yeah, thank you, you guys, for an amazing opportunity. What is the best uh, method of helping students to differentiate? between words for example overwork overtime especially when you are teaching online praise best questions for for today's live stream go to you praise fantastic questions kitty by the way we've got like uh, 15 minutes left so uh it's going quick right yes yes yeah okay. okay this one goes to you again uh praise loves manchester united my cousin also likes them my brothers, though, they, they support Liverpool. I don't really care. I, I don't really watch football. But so what do you think? Uh, if you have a student that uh, struggles to, to identify or differentiate between words that sound the same, especially online, how can you help those students? Well, uh, I try to pronounce it correctly to them. Yeah, mm -hmm. I eventually tell them first and then... I ask them to repeat after me. Mm. Yeah, that's just uh, the first thing. And I give a lot of examples if they cannot really connect. Let's say, for example, uh, they cannot pronounce the letter L, like little. Mm. And uh, I eventually look for another examples, like uh, woo. Yeah, and then, mm. yeah, these things. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, uh, repetition equals retention, mm -hmm. very important. So we get the students yes, to repeat yeah. what they say. Uh, you also use examples, plenty of examples for them to actually use the word. Uh, I would also encourage, you know, writing it down. And uh, I want, uh, I just thought of another thing too, is breaking these words into separate parts, right? So overwork, overtime. They're very similar. Break them up. Over, you explain what that means, and then time and work, you know. So uh, by breaking it up into smaller sections, the students uh, have a better appreciation for it. And uh, it, it can be other words too, you know, like, uh, for example, goal and girl, you know. Maybe some students have a problem with yeah. that. Then you break it down into the individual letters, and they can see, okay, goal, goal goal they repeat and then ask them to use it in sentences and girl 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 use girl in a sentence and you use the letters so i think very important there um 
And then Inkara says, Eric, coffee is great, but try hot water. Actually, guys, let me tell you. Uh, do you drink coffee, Kitty? Yes, I, I drink coffee. But I, coffee? I really like drink, drinking ginger tea. Yeah, I think it would be better uh, if we we're going to be drinking ginger tea because, you know, that could uh, protect our vocal health. <laughs> very important tip there yeah i think it's uh it's it's important to take care of our health especially our vocal health because that's your job you know i remember i was sick once and i had to teach online and that i, I couldn't speak well and and you know that hinders you as a teacher now for me um we, i started drinking coffee when i was maybe six years old every morning my dad would wake us up and bring us coffee now i know a lot of people are going against it but you know that's how we were brought up. We, uh, I drank a lot of coffee, me and my brothers, my, um, my brothers and I. And yeah, um, so I, I, I drank a lot of coffee and, you know, growing up too. And then a couple of years ago, I think I was when I was 31, um, I said, you know, I'm so addicted to coffee. Let's stop drinking coffee for one year. And I did it. I, I quit coffee for one year. It was just like, oh, OK, now I'm not going to drink coffee anymore. And just like that, I went cold turkey, didn't drink coffee. Sometimes I would miss it, especially because you, you link that to a habit. You know, every time I wake up, I would drink coffee. Every time I would eat something after a meal, I would crave coffee. So uh, you've got to look at those cravings that you have. It's similar with uh, cigarettes or uh, coffee or snacks. You know, find out, uh, we call those cornerstone habits. And if you have something that you do often, uh, it's like a trigger, you know, so you've got to be conscious of that and try not to do it. So, uh, but anyway, recently uh, I started drinking coffee again and I, I think I drink it too much. So I removed it from my house. So I do go out and I drink coffee, but not uh, in the morning. So I drink tea now. Uh, but yes, I do think hot water is better or some tea. I tried it and it helps. I definitely will. Uh, no, no. Uh, hi from there. And then, oh, sorry, guys, I'm very slow today. Steve, clarification. Uh, from a serious assessment. I see, I see, I see. Okay. Thank you, Steve, for the great questions. My dad, uh, thank you. So generous. Uh, Sikandar, uh, grammar or speaking without grammar, we will improve. Um, should we? Okay, this is a question for you. Kitty, is grammar important when you're teaching? Uh, is it important to teach grammar? Oh, yes, of course. Grammar is very important uh, for us to teach, to know the common mistakes in grammar, such as present simple or present perfect, these things, which is uh, pretty common mistakes, adding S or ES at last. Mm. And um, yes, they. I mean, we need to develop uh, the awareness of the students mm. so they could get used to in a habit and also the repetitions that they're not uh you know they're not saying the same mistakes again so i think i think uh i love that word you used awareness you know um so the natural method um that you're talking about sikandar is just learning by speaking uh, and being in and uh, being surrounded by by the language and using it and learning from people uh, the, the problem is you can do that, right? But actually, so when, when babies learn, they have their parents to teach them step by step, you know, uh, and then they're surrounded by the language and they learn as they go. They're not learning the grammar rules, right? But as a, as a second language uh, learner, you don't have that same environment. You also don't have that mom or dad to kind of guide you through the process. So it is important to understand the language, uh, the, the rules of the language. So um, uh, many times with my students, um, when I want to teach them something, I can, you know, I can give them example after example and let them figure out the rule for themselves. Or I can just tell them what the rule is or the example in their native language. They understand and then they apply it in their, in, in well, in, in the language so i do think it's important as a second language learner to to learn some of the grammar rules um i i think the problem that most of us have is that many uh second language teachers are uncomfortable teaching communication 
and instead instead go back to and rely on just teaching grammar and fall on that now i've got a question for you kitty because i don't ask you enough questions how do you get your students to come out of their shells how do you get them to communicate how do you get them to speak if you've got a shy student how do you get them to talk uh okay well, i go with the commonalities between the I and my students, then after that, when we have done the first expressions and impressions together, we try to do a kind of grammarian practice. Let's say, for example, while he is speaking and there's a, probably a mistake that occurs, so I just pointed out the mistakes. After that, I even write it down. And I give some kind of home training so that I could show some care to my students. I check it without even like uh, appearing into the lessons and send it them after the lessons. So I eventually uh, do these things. And uh, after that, yes, uh, I, I always ask them some questions. Yeah, like a discussion question so they could feel that I'm... I mean, they are at ease, they are comfortable to talk with me. And it goes up. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, <laughs> one says, hello, Kitty Sensei, you're the best. My question is, how many languages or dialects do you know? Um, do, uh, do you think it's difficult learning a new language, Kitty? So if I told you, you have to learn Korean, uh, do you think it would be difficult for you? Uh, if I'm going to focus on it, yeah, it's easier. If it's, you know, uh, if it I'm going to, to focus on it, because I can speak, uh, you know, Japanese. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I'm a beginner in Japanese, but I could, I could really talk to the, to Japanese students. Uh, and I also, was... I would like to add up, Erica. In the Philippines, uh. we have 169 ethnic dialects. So as you can see, I need to learn more than four dialects in my country. So I yeah, I, 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 I've yes, heard of that, and, and and it's very interesting. All the different dialects. It's almost like a different language when, <laughs> when you travel around, uh, and, yes. and and there's a pride to it too that you use the different dialects, right? <laughs> that you can identify someone that has something with you. Uh, now we've got a really nice question here. We've got eight minutes left. Uh, everyone, I'm so sorry if I missed some of your your um, questions or. Um, this is a nice one. A language is to be caught, not to be caught. Wait, to be taught, not to be caught. Uh, teaching is deal with human beings, and it's you that guide them. Very true, Chasm. Uh, <laughs> what is the secret behind not sitting on the soap? <laughs> okay, BM, this is, a, this is a good question because... What? Oh, it's because my table is only so high. I can sit on a higher table, but this one is in front of my couch, and... And I don't have a nice background. If you go to my first live streams, I, 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 I sat on a different one, but this is just the look I'm going for. A court, not to be taught. Right. Oh, okay. Uh, Jathan, very good quote. Hibiscus tea, very nice. Uh, I've been drinking uh, um, uh, uh, rooibos tea, which is actually from South Africa. Steve says, if uh, one wants to teach through immersion method with, without providing the immersion conditions the task will fail successfully steve quote of the day goes to you this is amazing you always give me the best quotes um i i would i, I wish from the start i would go through uh you know when you first started quoting and i wish i could write it down into mind um okay wait there was something else okay um i'm going to go to the last question before we say goodbye and before i give you a chance to like talk about some things but uh mochaba says here hello to you both lately i've been thinking about the question of how to keep my students motivated after class for instance what kind of homework should i give them so that they would do it thanks now um kitty yes. do you do you give your students homework and what kind of homework do you give them Eventually, I usually give them a homework that is more on writing practice. Let's say, for example, I give a kind of cards and I ask them to discuss about this. In the cards, it says a hypothetical questions like, 
which is more important having talents or, or working hard and eventually describe this kind of hypothetical questions send it to me and i'll be checking it they really like that i am checking using my red pen yeah mm -hmm. and then i send it back they feel much more significant and uh, they feel it really matter during the class so these things make them feel really important with your lessons because they will never forget you and you stand out to them mm. uh, i think the, 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 that's the thing is uh if uh, when you give homework it should be meaningful so you actually you ask their opinions for them to write it down and then also you take the you take you put in the effort to grade it and to send it back for them as feedback and shows that it's important and uh, they can learn from it. So, you know, we shouldn't just give homework because it's there to give and parents expect it or the students think they, they need to do something or we want to give them, we want to keep them busy. It, it, it should be for them to, uh, to, to improve and it should have a specific purpose. Also, it should be doable on their own, you know. Um, it, it should be something that they are able to do and they understand doing it. So what I like to do with a lot of homework, if I do give homework, is I start the homework with the students and then they know how to do it and what to do. And uh, I think that also helps. Okay. Now, Kitty, we are, we are at the end of the live stream. First of all, um, everyone go and check out Kitty's channel. I put in... Um, I put in her YouTube, her Facebook page, and her Instagram. Go and check those out and uh, subscribe to her. Um, Kitty, I want to say thank you so much for joining. Uh, before we end, uh, oh, what would you like to talk to? Um, uh, what do you want to talk about? Uh, what do you want to share? What are you working on? Uh, right now, I've been working on the website that we're preparing in the future. Yes, you are discussing with uh, a friend of mine. And uh, we are not ready to anything which is like doing a kind of uh, a kind of courses or whatsoever like that because we are uh, working on our students. As you know, I'm pretty busy with my students. And uh, they say I focus on the students. It would be better if I do that rather than doing a lot of things. And, Yes, and I hope that all of the teachers would show even much more care with our students because we're not just going to get money, but we, we tend to give efforts and love for our students. That's just so cool. Thank you. Well, that's very <laughs> sweet of you. Um, let me ask you, um, so you're, you've got so many things you're working on. Your plate is full. I don't know how you do it, um, but... Uh, what kind of video or what kind of content can people expect if they go onto your channel? Will you make videos about some things, some lessons perhaps to help them for English learners or for teachers? What, what kind of content can they expect? Um, in my contents, I have done, uh, yeah, how to teach English online. Yeah, such as I have talked about their peripheral devices and also uh, getting your first interviews online because i'm just trying trying and rooming around with the different companies on the interviews so i have shared a kind of videos a real-time interviews into a vietnamese online english platform but i didn't go to that kind of job i have landed job but i just want to have a demo practice for a job interview for the teachers what else and the other stuff like uh for the teachers nice yeah so uh you're making this content to help people and uh i really want to thank you for it okay uh everyone thank you so much thank you for the questions the comments the wise words i really appreciate it kitty thank you so much for joining us and sharing your thank experience you. uh, i hope you have a have a great week and uh all the all the things you do and all the teaching goes well okay everyone have a nice day bye bye Thank you. Bye.